All right, this video is physics 26A Blake. Ought to be, anyway. And I'm going to go ahead with this video and start into chapter 6, uh, which can be a real tricky chapter. So we've got to talk about momentum and collisions. And we can do this by working all of our momentums in pretty much one direction, right and left. We probably this year will not do a momentum in 2D collision for whatever goofy reason the author doesn't have it in this book. And uh, I don't know for sure if I've got the piece of equipment that'll do it. I don't think I do. And we're not gonna have time anyway. Um, so we'll see. I'll, I, don't, I can't remember if I threw that in or not. Momentum can be tricky, and this is last year was my first year in this book, so I got a lot of work to do to get this straightened out. Because as confusing as work and energy is, this can be worse. It's not particularly, well, it can be hard, I guess. Momentum is a vector, though. So when you take a scalar, like mass, which is just a number, it doesn't have a direction, and you multiply it by a velocity, you get a momentum in the same direction. Um, and the unit is kilograms times meter per second. That's our MKS unit. I have a number of videos on this. I'd say at least three that I'm going to have you watch that are not part of problems out of the book uh, to get you to see the relationship between velocity, momentum, kinetic energy. It's stuff that's not in the textbooks a lot of times that's important to know where it comes from. Okay, so there are some problems there. Let's, we're going to jump around in this chapter, the first section. It's pretty straightforward, shouldn't have too much trouble with it. And then we're kind of going to jump to the back and not do things in order because it's to do it in order is harder. So I'm on page 209, momentum, question one. What velocity must a car with a mass of 1,210 kilograms have in order to have the same momentum as the pickup truck? And see if a problem 6A. Well, the pickup truck had a momentum of 56,000 56, kilograms times meters per second. And that's equal to 1,210 kilograms times V. I don't remember which direction the pickup truck was going. It was going east, apparently. So this momentum and this velocity should be to the east. And if you divide 56,000 by 1210, it just comes out to be 46 meters per second to the east. Number two, ostrich with mass of 146 kilograms is running to the right. We're probably gonna call that positive. That's arbitrary, but positive. Velocity is 17 meters per second. Find the momentum. It's just mass times velocity, 17 meters per second to the right. So the momentum is 250 kilograms times 2,500 kilograms times meters per second to the right. Number three, 21 kilogram child riding a 5.9 kilogram bike. These ones you should be following the format of, okay, I'll give it five minutes to do the problem. I'm either done or I'm stuck, check the solution. And these ones you're done and you're checking it right away because it's, it's, it's each one of these is a 30 second problem. Okay, so we want the sum of everything is 26.9 times 4.5 meters per second northwest is 120 kilograms times meters per second northwest. The child alone is 21 kilograms times 4.5 meters per second to the northwest is 94 kilograms times meters per second to the northwest. And the bike is 5.9 kilograms times four and a half meters per second to the northwest, 27 kilograms times meters per second to the northwest. These two don't exactly add to get that, but it's a rounding issue. Okay. Then the next thing they get into is the impulse momentum theorem. So impulse is equal to momentum change. 
impulse is force times time, or force over time, or force times delta t. And this is change in momentum. Uh, that letter P comes from Leibniz, I guess the book says, but I've seen where it's come from other sources. It doesn't really matter. Something in Latin, maybe. Progress from Leibniz. Momentum is mass times velocity, or a change in momentum, remember that's a vector, is uh, mass times the change in velocity. So we can use that for 1A. If you have a uh, 0.5 kilogram football, and it was going 15 meters per second, and now it's going zero meters per second, uh, and the catching it process put, took 0.02 seconds, the uh, receiver, if everything, if the ball was going to the right, the receiver caught to the ball, puts a force of 380 newtons on the ball to the left, but the ball puts a force of 380 newtons on the, the receiver to the right. In this chapter, the positives and negatives are more of a problem than they were last chapter. Okay, number two. Six B. The soccer ball approaches a player at 18 meters per second. The player strikes the ball and makes it move in the opposite direction of 22 meters per second. What is the impulse delivered by the ball? I can always count on these to give students fit. If the ball ends up going, we're gonna call this time north positive and south negative. It's, it's arbitrary, but conventional. So the ball was, ends up going 22 meters per second in the opposite direction, is, which is south. Starts going at, let me try that again. Yes, starts by going 18 meters per second to the north. So we go finest, final minus initial. Sometimes students want to say, well, if the ball was going 18 and 22, then that difference should be four. They can't understand it. No, it's going 18 this way and 22 this way. That difference isn't four. It's the sum of those, or it is the subtraction of them. But as long as you put them in here carefully, you can do it, or just use your sense of intuition and it'll be okay. But it's not four. Times 0.4 kilograms, the impulse that's delivered to that ball is minus 16 kilograms times meter per second. Now we don't know how much of that's force and how much of that's time in this problem, nor is it important. That's just the total impulse. Just in case you don't, so that you don't forget this side. Is the impulse. Sometimes this is a handy little thing to use, like for example with uh, rocket motors. The impulse is, a, is the way you figure out what gets done. Next. half kilogram object is at rest, a three newton force to the right acts on it over an interval of 1.5 seconds. What is the velocity? Well, if we use impulse for times momentum there, we have the force and the time and the mass. That's the easy way to solve for velocity. So uh, it ends up being nine meters per second. is the change in velocity. So if it starts at zero, then it ends up at nine meters per second because it's at rest. And when it, at the end of that interval, a force of four newtons to the left is applied for three seconds. What is the velocity at the end of three seconds? Okay, now, uh, 
your initial velocity was nine meters per second, and that was to the right, so we're gonna call it positive. And you got a half kilogram negative four Newton force for three seconds, this two multiplied is 12, divided by 0 0.5 is 24, negative, add nine to negative 24, and you end up with negative 15 meters per second to the left is what it's going. Okay, number four. A 0.82 kilogram man drops from rest and comes to rest after hitting the water. What force does the water exert on him? This is kind of a same scenario we fell into with the uh, review at the end of chapter five, one of the last problem I think it was. Impulse is equal to momentum. And the only thing we got to go on is the gravitational potential energy here and then the kinetic energy at the surface. There isn't enough information to figure out what's going on beneath the surface of the water. But we know that the guy, when he hits, is 7.672 meters per second. So if we put that in here for V, and we solve for uh, force using the impulse momentum equation that I have right here, we get 1,100 Newtons is the force applied. Now, what about underneath that water and all that? Well, the additional displacement the man travels in the water is accounted for by the buoyant force. So we don't have to pay attention to that here. If we're just counting this force in addition to whatever buoyant force there is. and it comes out to be 1,100 Newtons upward. So I'll just leave that positive when we don't need to worry about saying upward then. Well, I guess we do, because it is a vector. However, he is falling, so we can assume he's not falling you know, sideways or weird answer. So I think that's good. Okay, let's uh, stop that video here and go on to another video. This one is uh, Physics 26A Blake, and the next one is Physics 26B Blake.